Make sure we're okay. All right, we're good. So I see things happening. Is it time to dive in, Joe? Yeah, let's let's dive into these comments. So I don't know how you want to approach this, Mike. Um, if you want to do this, like, I guess we'll go from the top. I got it by like the most popular. So for those of you that don't know, we did a, a video with Spencer Cornelia like back in May. So like four months ago, three months ago. Yeah, three months ago. And uh, yeah, since his channel is popular, it's interesting uh, seeing the comments and everything like that because you know gets a lot of gets a lot more comments than our stuff and people were uh people were not too happy what's wrong joe why why aren't they happy i don't know i don't know let's find out <laughs> i don't know um okay so i, I need guess... you to read these because i can't really <clears throat> yeah obviously i can't see your screen i can only see what's going on i could probably on share the... my screen I, I can't don't involved. worry about it just read it just right. read it <laughs> so I, let's just go from the top. Some of these might not be about us, but you know what? Let's start by new, and then we'll see what happens. So Immortal Sirens, heart, heart, heart. Does drop shipping really pay off though? LOLs. I don't even know what to say about that, but um, that's not that's not really a good one. We were looking at these. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. I found a good one. Just seven minutes in. But the guy calls a combination of some random product slapped on a page and SEO Google ads for those pages a solid foundation, uh, air quotes. Really? First off, this principle is old AF, if AF means as frick. Uh, it's been done since ages, and there's not, since ages and there's nothing new or special to it whatsoever. Second, it's not a solid... Uh, Second, it's not a solid business whatsoever. You don't sell any products of your own. You don't you don't sell products that have that that you have any specific specific expertise in. You don't sell based on having a brand built of your own. You just sell to keyword searches. Big deal. I used to be in domain businesses like 200 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I wish I got in the domain business 200 years ago. Um and we did similar stuff. Having SEO pages for, for specific keywords under keyword domain sites that matched the keyword 100% in the domain name. Back then, not only helping with the Google ranking, but also catching type in traffic and then making money by targeted clicks or affiliate links or whatever. It works, but it's trash as well. You don't have a solid business. You just playing that you just play the game and you're totally dependent on Google's, Facebook's, Insta's, etc. algorithm and rules as they don't, as they change those and you adjust or you are fricked. That's not a solid business. With a solid business, you have built your own brand. You're either selling your own products or at least have expertise in the niche, etc., etc. By the way, one get one giveaway that people are not experts they claim to be or not as successful as they want you to believe is when they are apparently not making money, not making enough money to somehow fix their crazy hairline or seem to still be living in their mom's house. <laughs> Um, not that the opposite of proof of someone being legit either, but if you're really a guru and make tons of money, there's no reason for that hairline or an apartment that looks like your mom's basement. That usually tells me enough to know they're just faking it. You got us. There's a lot, to, there's a lot to unpack here. I don't know where to start. Whose hairline are they talking about? That's the real question. Probably mine. Cause you don't have a hairline. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem though. It's non-existent. Yeah, I mean, look at look at Jeff Bezos. Yeah, right. Look, how many uh, great men are bald? We got uh, Shark Tank, uh, Kevin O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary, Jeff Bezos, Damon from Shark Tank. Yeah, uh, I mean, so off the, off the top, this guy's standard for success being a hairline is uh, probably the reason why he's writing a five paragraph essay in a YouTube comment. That's usually a good indicator that you're not successful. Yes, but I guess let's start from the top. Yeah, let's start from the top. But first of all, hold on. Uh, nothing wrong with living in your mom's house. So, Ma! <laughs> Ma, can you bring me some water? I'm trying to do the stream. <laughs> See, look at that. Look at that. My throat's a little... <clears throat> anyway. Um, <laughs> so, let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the SEO being a solid foundation... Uh, as a business compared to having your own brand 
Having your own brand is the really the best way to own a business. So think about it like this. How many people own their own brand and you see those brands go from, oh, I'm getting a ton of investment money, I'm, I'm getting all this interest, but they don't actually like make any money for real versus owning a bunch of different sites that rank in Google. And yeah, you're reliant on the algorithm, but you have enough... Uh, you have enough things out there that the risk of Google taking your entire infrastructure down, you know, it, it would is very low. That would be like a world changing thing, like the Google data centers like burned yeah, down. Yeah, I mean that would have major implications for the world and not just um, our our non foundational business models. If something happened that completely crushed the algorithms, people with brands would see huge suffering within their business because the truth is we are working with people with brands the key is we just know how to do these seo things and the, the advertisements much better than they do because they're focused on making their products and building their brand and their product quality and all that stuff like that so um to suggest that just because you don't own the product means that your foundation of a business is not solid I mean, look at Wayfair. Look at what percentage of products does Amazon own? It's so ridiculous. On that note, Mike, what percentage of Wayfair's traffic comes from organic? What? That's a good. That's a good question, Joe. What percentage? A high percentage. Wanna, I, it's definitely a very high percentage. And what comes from uh, Google slash Bing traffic? Sales. So what? What does this guy? This guy actually knows nothing to have a comment like this, because. Where does he expect people to come from if you have this brand? Is it, should he just be on, should we be on the dark web? Ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I, don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Like, you, you're literally, you know, you know how to take your product that you're selling and put it in front of people. I'd rather have that skill set than have my own brand. And guess what, Joe? Say we're selling all these Kitchen Island brands. And then whoopsie doopsie, this guy's prophecy comes to life and something happens. The, our, we get crushed in the algorithm. Well, now we know, oh, yeah, we've been running ads for the last three years on these products. We actually know the exact keywords that convert. We actually know the exact products that sell. Okay, yeah, we'll go and we'll, we'll make our own product yeah, we'll if we're really in that bad of a situation. And now we already have uh, – we're already 20 steps ahead from someone who's, I'm going to build a kitchen Island brand and they go and they seek out these manufacturers and they do something dumb. That's actually why the majority of businesses fail within five years because they go to that step rather than doing the low risk um, marketing foundational approach that we do where we have, we avoid all of that. We already get in with people that have proof of concept and good logistics. And all we have to do is learn how to, do the marketing and they want you to do the marketing. So I'm done with this guy. Yeah, whoopsie doopsie indeed. Um, okay. okay. LOL. They have a disgusting funnel that leads to a 5k mentorship. What in the world? Who said that? Tom. Oh, is that a different comment? That's a different comment. Well, actually okay. let's, let's get to that one in a second. Spencer actually replied to this guy. He said, they never make a, never claim to make a bunch of money, nor do they use outlandish income slash wealth claims to drive sales. And how they spend their money is their business. Would you agree? Sounds like you have a bone to pick, which is fine. But if you find these guys to be fake, fraud, unsuccessful, or whatever, then I'd be willing to bet you'd find anyone selling a course to fit in your label box. I personally don't care as I have nothing riding on your perception, but your posts do come across as having a little bit of a bias. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, definitely if some preliminaries here, if people haven't seen this interview or know who this guy is, this guy, all he does is just expose gurus. And we actually reached out to him because we felt like, I mean, Joe, you can, ex you can explain that since you reached out to well, him. Well, he does what more than problem? expose gurus. He, so a lot of the, the guru exposing people, um, they like are kind of actually clueless when it comes to, they think anyone that sells a course just automatically scam. And I could tell yeah. this guy had like a bit of a different perspective. Like he, you know, is willing to expose a lot of stuff out there that is, uh, you know, not, not good. 
I think he recently yeah. did a video on Amazon automation, which was a great, great video. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, we, I reached out to this guy cause he, I mean, he does real estate. Like he's clearly into like doing the right things financially, even if he doesn't do online business per se. And so, you know, he was like, yeah, it would be a good fit. So that's, that's what it is. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. So we actually, we decided to go on, on his show knowing that, you know, this would kind of happen because when you make videos like this, it does attract a lot of toxicity because who's, who's really watching this stuff. I think maybe if you're, if you have been scammed or you're worried about something and you Google, you know, is Bill Lassett online a scam? You would want someone coming up that would expose it. But the people that are like consistently watching this shit just for the entertainment value, um, it's usually a pretty toxic thing to do in my opinion. So yes, well, it's like you want to have uh, your own. Would... You want to confirm your own bias. Like you want to have. Yeah. You want to take some comfort exactly. in your own failures. Like, oh, oh, I suck. So maybe it's not <laughs> me. Yeah, this this does affirm the worldview that you know anyone selling a course is a scammer, and you know that that's fine. Why don't you can go and you can get an MBA for three hundred thousand dollars, and you can pay student loans for the rest of your life, rather than our you know, $1,500 course or even our $5,000 course. Yeah. This is definitely a scam. So what do we think about that, Joe? Why are we selling a $5,000 course? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I, just, I don't know either, honestly. <laughs> I don't but, even know. I feel like we haven't sold a course in a while. But it's all good because, so, I mean, I don't even know what to say here. There's no, I have no reason to justify paying a price like this but i think our students would definitely yeah. agree that they've received fair value for what they have paid for i think we go yeah and here's the thing is i think i want to charge more because i think we go I above and i think we go above and beyond what we've charged in the past and here's here's the thing is when we started doing this stuff when we started doing online business doing drop shipping yep. we had so much less so much less than what we give out to people. And, you know, we were still able to, to make it work. And so 5k is, is nothing for, for it's the really not. And it actually bothers me, um, that we can charge more for it because I think there is a certain level of like, there's a market for online courses, right? It seems like the, you know, under a thousand dollar stuff seems to work well. It all has to do with, really the brand you've built and I, but I, I do think like it would be a bit outlandish to say to charge $25,000 for say like our, our basic course, because even though many people have gone on to be successful with it and just creating a store that can make you a thousand dollars a month, you would recoup that investment actually pretty easily. Um, it's not, it's not fair market value at this point to charge $25,000 for it but we should be able to. And the problem is the majority of people don't do stuff. And, um, you know, we were actually talking with Spencer on the show about this and someone else had a hate comment about that. I said this, and I was like, they, I said, people need to pay us for their own benefit. And they yeah. took it as I was trying to, I, I don't know. They, they took it as like, that's all. That's the only reason we charge money for our courses. It's obviously not the only reason, but it is true. The more someone pays, the more that they actually have to mentally buy in, the more they have skin in the game. And so if you don't understand that, you're not going to understand how to be successful at all. Yeah. I mean, what it comes down to is like, if, if you're just trying to do something like, unless you have like a very, very, very strong motivation, uh, paying for it is the only way to, to give you that motivation, unless there's some like outside factor that's like really really driving you like if you have a job and you know your job's okay like you don't really want to be in it um but you mm -hmm. don't quite have that like oh like i have to quit like i have to like i had you know like i had when i was at my job like i i prop so i i there was no option for me quitting because i woke up every day and i was like i'm not i have to quit i have to there's no there's nothing <laughs> else there's no other way but if, you know, if it's like, la-di-da, -la -la it's okay, I'm making a good living, it'd be nice to quit. 
And then, oh, here's a free video on YouTube. Yeah, maybe I'll do this. But then suddenly yeah. if you pay 5K for a course, it's like, oh, oh, I better, I better wake up. Uh, and so I, I've committed to this, so now I have to do it. Yeah, like that apathy, that complacency is a total killer for whatever you're trying to do in your life because you can't you can't be one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. If you want to go somewhere, you just you just got to hit the gas. And we see this sometimes with our students. Like we actually have to coach people for this. And you know, people are paying us for that. They're not just paying us for a series of videos even though they certainly they certainly can and that, that is an option. But there's continuing education to it and it's a process of rewiring your brain towards just going in and doing something and figuring out, getting the feedback that that's actually how you can go and achieve success because a lot of people haven't had that experience in their life. Uh, I mean, the majority of people haven't started a business or had to go through something where they had to apply that mindset. You know, people are just used to going to school. You can half-ass that. Maybe you can get passing grades doing that. Maybe you can go to college. You half-ass that. And then all of a sudden you have a degree. Now you can get a job and now you go to the job and you're half-assing that. And so you go through your life in this this state of having to never really try or having to never really give your all for something. And that's what this is about. What makes and it a lot worse, of people, unfortunately, are coming from that. Before you, sorry, before you move on, uh, if you, what makes it actually worse uh, if you go through your life like that and you're like kind of half-assing everything? Because I definitely am like that. I mean, like I pretty much, like with school, like I, I pretty much like. Like, I think, like, almost every class in high school, like, I slept. And, like, I was still, I guess, I you know, just for whatever reason, I was still able to get, like, decent grades. So, the thing is, is if you have, like, a relative, like, if you have, like, a relative, like, level of, like, book smart or whatever, and you can, like, pull that stuff off in school and in college, um, it, it kind of sets you up for the fact that you can do that with everything. And yeah. with this, you can't. So, it makes it, if you're, like quote, smart, it makes it almost even worse, I think. Whereas if, say, say you were in school and, like, you, you know, you struggled to get a C, and, but, like, you wanted that C and, like, you tried everything to get this the C, I think you're actually in a better spot to do something like this than someone who just was able mm -hmm. to get, like, straight A's and B's just with barely trying. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right with that because the person that actually is maybe – they're starting out from a bit of a lower level – but they want something bad enough that they're actually forced to try and just keep working in order to get it. They're going to pass that person that may be ahead of them just kind of automatically because that person who has everything sort of decently going for them, they're just going to stay stuck in mediocrity because they have no big incentive to change. Meanwhile, the person that started off at a lower level, you know, they're just going to keep working and working and working and working until they actually just surpass you and be, those are actually why some of these people who are the most successful didn't start out that great. They started out, you know, in bad situations or they weren't good in school, all these things. It's because they just kept going so, so hard that they gained like this mastery level of whatever it is that they were doing. Yeah. Um, so hold on. Let's, let's get to that comment. Actually, Benjamin Garland, LOL. So let me get this straight. You put people in high pressure sales situations, not because you want their money, but because you want to give them value. LOL. Jesus, how stupid do you think these people pressure. are? We don't actually have a high pressure sales uh, funnel. I kind of wish we did. Like, I'm like, this is it. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is us putting the pressure on. I mean, we have. We're talking about balls. Yeah. This was almost an inner. This was almost an in. Oh, oh, Jesus! How stupid do these people? How stupid do these people think people are? This was almost an interesting interview until that part. Almost, I swear to God, I've freaking heard it all now. Uh, so we just kind of yeah. I mean, this. so you can just see that this person is totally stuck. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I was saying we just addressed that, but I just wanted to read the actual comment. Yeah. Yeah, but you can just tell in their demeanor like how biased they are towards this idea that everyone who's putting themselves out there and selling a course, there's something there's something shady going on. And you know what, Joe? I think more than anyone else in this industry, you and I do a better job at just like breaking down any 
sort of um, layer of inauthentic inauthenticity there may be between like you know because most creators, as we've talked about, are very inauthentic because they're putting on the sense of being professional and I don't know why where they learn to do that and it's almost it that in itself is shady. Yeah, because it's just not you wouldn't expect someone to act like that in real life. This is us acting regular. This is how we actually act. And people can tell. Well, it's pretty close. So, it's pretty close. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how This is it. I mean I I just don't I don't understand how people can like take that and and believe that we are doing something something scammy or whatever yeah i mean i think there's a clear difference from when you watch the i guess from what we do and then like you know you watch something about like an ad about like uh i don't know just one of the ads out there for like amazon automation or something like that like i think there's a clear clear difference between you can watch like that's not how they act on like whatever thing you're looking at you know like this is at least like yeah, 90, not, 90, 90, 95% of what I would act like in real life. <laughs> yeah, we would be coming on here and doing this every day if this was somehow a front. Because being a f- – fronting is exhausting. You can't go and front for an hour two times a week and just be someone that you're not because they say, Joe, that the self is always shining through. So – Eventually, we, there'd be uh, there'd be cracks in our facade. Unless you're a deep, deep sociopath. Well, yeah, that's the only exception <laughs> is if you're some sort of narcissist. Um, all what right, all right. I'm trying to look for some negative ones. We'll read some more positive ones after. I mean, most of these comments are positive, which is good. Um, okay, here we go. These yeah. guys are mostly bullshit artists. I'm sure they have made money with their SEO tricks, but they are talking out of their ass when it comes <laughs> to drop shipping. Barely even scratch the surface. And no, I am not suggesting that drop shipping is some magic formula or even coast or even close to it. Can speak with some authority on this, being that I have been selling on Amazon for a decade with my business, and I am well familiar with it. Plus. I have a very good friend who has a company that has been the number one or number two seller in its category on Amazon for five years as a drop shipper. By the way, the whole scanning products at retail slash discount stores on Amazon has a well-defined term for it. It's called retail arbitrage. The fact that they did not know that is comical. <laughs> I actually replied to this guy. I actually replied to this guy. Actually, we have many videos with retail arbitrage in the title. I checked them out. <laughs> I checked them out, and while I can't say they are bad, I think you only have a partial grasp of the world of retail arbitrage and dropshipping. Although most of retail arbitrage's juice has long been squeezed by now, but there was plenty of more to it than some replenishables in clearance aisles. Chris Breen's book would have taught you more and had better prepared you for RA than whatever course you bought back then. SEO and Kindle publishing seems to be your thing, and selling courses. And I replied to him again. I've made over 10K per month with retail arbitrage back in the day, and I've read Chris Green's book when it came out. I don't have a problem with retail arbitrage. It worked well for me. And I actually recommend it to people starting out if they completely lack any technical skills. We make websites because we can sell those business businesses and get bigger exits. You cannot sell a retail arbitrage business, and that makes it nothing more than a higher than a higher paying job. Oh my god. How, what are we at? 32 minutes? Yeah. Why do these people say this stuff? <laughs> I mean... Can we start from the top again? Because I can't, I can't see. Uh, so he basically says that he can... St- We're talking out of our ass when it comes to dropshipping because he, has, he knows people that have like basically crushed it on... A- it seems like dropshipping on Amazon. Number one or number two in the categories of whatever it is. And? Yeah, I don't know. And what? <laughs> like, why are we saying we're not saying anything bad about drop shipping? We we do it. Like, maybe we talked about drop shipping from Walmart to Amazon, which is 
stupid. And maybe we were barely scratching the surface with that. But again, I'm not interested in, in, in doing some like Amazon arbitrage. If you're buying something lower from another retailer and just selling it on Amazon or even a wholesaler and just selling it on Amazon, like you can't really sell anything at the end of the day. So it's kind of, kind of a waste of time. Yeah. And I mean, you've done stuff where you have essentially, I, I wouldn't call it drop shipping, but you were getting in like wholesale stuff and shipping it to Amazon. You actually had like uh, contracts with brands, almost like we do now, except you were taking it in and, and sending stuff to Amazon, whereas we just sell it on our site. So I don't know how this even relates. I don't know why he thinks that this person being on Amazon and doing well on Amazon means anything. I, I, we know we know plenty of people that do well on Amazon. Well, but, Mike, I think yeah. what's interesting is I want to talk about this for a second because when we went to our when we went to that conference. What was the yes. name of it again? What was the name? Oh my god! I forget the name. Someone in the chat, tell them the name. <sighs> no, it was Ecom All Stars. It was Ecom All Stars. Ecom All Stars. So one of the friends we made actually, we hung out with him a bunch. We still talk to him once in a while. He yeah. he was really into this whole his whole thing was selling on Amazon by any means necessary. Like he like yeah. that was it. Like if it was on Amazon, he's a good example of the first comment we read. Why aren't you building a brand? Not that his, not that not that would that was his thought process, but he had a zillion brands. But go on. Yeah, he had a zillion brands selling on Amazon, but his whole thing was not his whole thing was not building a brand on Amazon per se. It was just how can I make money selling on Amazon? That was it. Like if it was Amazon related, he was doing it. He was doing the online retail arbitrage. He was doing building a brand. He was doing wholesaling. He was doing everything. Just send drop shipping on Amazon. Everything you could think of. And the thing is, is we, we always talk about this with, with the low ticket stuff, but you know, every time we talk to him and I like him a lot, you know, I think he's chasing the dragon a bit. Definitely. He loves chasing the dragon though. He loves you it. Know, he, it's a bit different because he's only chasing it within the Amazon hemisphere. So maybe, maybe cause like for people that haven't sold on Amazon before, a lot of what FBA uh, involves if maybe there's other ways to do it, I, I don't maybe just from my perspective, what I've seen is that there's a lot of tools involved and a lot of these tools are actually pretty gray hat in terms of things like doing rebates or different ways to sort of pump the algorithm for your product so that obviously you can rank higher and you can get more organic sales. And like we've talked about with Kindle, it's sort of um, a vicious cycle from there. So there's always new things popping up to aid with that. And I think the problem with Amazon is it's almost like steroids. You know, it's illegal to do them. It's against the rules, but everyone is doing them. So how do you level the playing field? And that that's the problem with Amazon. And that's the problem with being focused on living and dying by Amazon. Because we have no problem. We sell books. We sell Kindle books on Amazon. Um, we've tried drop shipping some things from Amazon and decided, you know, ultimately we didn't feel like doing it. But we know people that do really well on, on Amazon. You know, the, the guy that bought two of our sites, Joe, has uh, an incredible FBA business. Yeah. And, you know, the person you mentioned, they do they do well on Amazon. Uh, he sold one of his brands for, I mean, 40000 80000 something like that. So I believe someone is doing most things. But what we talk about is a consistent approach that if you just do it over and over and over again, see our other videos where we talk about our criteria, it will yield compounding results and it'll be something you can sell and all of that. And so, yeah, while he's chasing the dragon and he's been chasing the dragon for four years, we've literally been doing the same things with our stores. We've been doing the same things that we were doing that day when we met him. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. He's always that's that's what you were kind of getting at is he's chasing the dragon in the guard in regards like he's he's doing well consistently. And he's still doing well, I'm sure, but he's it's always something new with him, and it's like the new thing he's doing the new thing just to to stay on to stay on par with everything else. Like yeah, said, with the great he has to keep doing a new thing to, to maintain that level of um, that level of income. Yeah, and I don't I don't know what it's at now, but. Yeah, we've been able to essentially just 
do the same thing. I mean, obviously we've learned more along the way, which is the idea, but the technique, the techniques and strategies and the, the structures of our campaigns, a lot of it has literally been the same for several years. And it's, we've only just seen it grow because we've learned more things about time to mature. It's been a much more compounding process and it's allowed us to have that going, have that growing. And then we can go and do other things like land stuff. And we actually just made a land sale just now, Joe. Did we? So look at that. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah. What makes me just made a deposit. What makes me suspicious with any business that purports to teach people how to make money doing what they do is this. Why would anyone willing in, willingly increase, willingly create competition for themselves? It just doesn't make sense and in, it immediately makes me think, scam. Do you see General Electric <laughs> selling videos on how to make money designing wind turbines? Or Dollar Tree selling seminars on how to open your own profitable dollar store? If someone wants to make money doing exactly what they do, you should be moving in the opposite direction of that shyster. Let's read some of the comments. So I actually reply, we've explained this multiple times on our channel, but I'll give you a quick rundown. For us to build 50 to $100 million dropshipping store would be very difficult and would require stuff, getting, stuff like getting an office or an entire slew of things that we don't want to do. Instead, we can run smaller stores and teach each others how to do the same thing as a way to leverage our success in that business. It better suits my lifestyle than trying to make a billion dollar e-commerce business. And he says, sorry, I should have clarified my comment to say that it's not directed at you, but gurus like Dan Loke, et cetera. Doesn't Dan, here's, doesn't Dan Loke teach sales? Like, that's what I thought. Like, so one of our, I mean, I think he's just, that's like a, he's like a hard pressure sales guy. Yeah. But that's the thing. He's teaching a, like, he's teaching a tactic. Like one of your, someone you yeah, know. I don't think Dan Logan is doing anything to create competition for himself. I, I don't exactly. And why would he, that's, that's such a BS comment. Why would he comment on our video about something completely unrelated? I don't know. But from what I understand about Dan Logan, he teaches like sales tactics. And I, I can't speak with any authority yeah. on this, but unless he's teaching you, like you can apply his sales tactics anywhere. And I think you know someone that, is totally legit, like does really well um, in kind of similar stuff to what we do, not on selling courses at all, but they love Dan Loke for whatever. I don't know why. I mean, I, I don't know why, but I think- They don't sell courses? This person you're talking about? They do, but it's not their main income. Yeah, I mean- I think I know if you're talking, it's a, it's a woman, right? Yeah. But the point is you can take a, take a sales tactic and apply it to anything. Well, what I was going to say, what I was going to say was, yes, this person is a huge Dan Loke fan. People say he's a scammer. Uh, she says, you know, this is my mentor. Like I've learned so much from him and that's, that's what it is. People, there, there's people who are going to be happy with something. People who are going to be, say something's a scam. You have that whole spread going on. So, yeah, I don't know. This idea of someone being a scammer by creating competition for themselves is, I don't know where this one came from, Joe, but I've actually seen the opposite be true. Like, for, for instance, the, the Land Academy people, they, they, had, they, they really have no, no reason to scam. And they've, they were making a lot of money and they spent... It's, they said it took them six months to make their first course. And why would, why would they do this? Why would they create all this competition for themselves? Because they literally were the only ones doing what they were doing. You know, sending out offers to yeah. do and doing the land a certain way. Why did they... They completely blew up their own spot. But it's worked out to their benefit because they've actually now created their own ecosystem of people that they've developed into experts. Now everyone shares capital and so everyone could do bigger deals. They use the money to create all these tools that make things easier for themselves and for everyone. And it, it, you learn. And so, yeah, you're right. We've addressed this multiple times. Yeah, and think about that. I mean, so in addition to not really creating competition, because if I have a drop shipping store in the and I'm selling kitchen islands, you know, what is it going to bother me if you're out there selling, um, 
whatever, like Peloton bikes or something. Not that you could sell Peloton bikes, but what does it bother me? Like that, you know, I don't, it's not, I'm just teaching you the tactics to execute it. How you do it is not necessarily going to compete with me, but what it will do is like we've seen with some of our students, we got a student in the UK blowing up right now. And, you know, we've come to a, come to a deal, we, which we make deals just like the Land Academy does with our students to where, you know, we get a cut of their store in, in an exchange for like a consultancy type arrangement. And so we get to wet our beaks uh, in all these drop shipping stores rather than having to manage and run a whole bunch of them by ourselves. Yeah, it's not, it would be so stupid if we, all we did was just make stores. We had that. It's not worth it. There was a well time. Enough. I was gonna say there, there was a time when I think we, where we that's that is what we did. What just made a lot of stores? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did that for like a couple of months, and then we realized, all right, like we can't keep doing this. Yeah. So, we just grew them and and sold it, half of them, majority of them actually. So, yeah, it, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work and we learned a lot. And then instead of doing that all over again, oh, you know, we created partnerships like with Jared and then, you know, we, we made a course so that we can just leverage that knowledge. And you know what? It helps us because again, I, we've talked about this over and over and over, but, but even the people that we don't partner with, a majority of people aren't going to do it. And the people that do it, we actually get feedback based on the things that we teach and the things that we know. It refines our process. It helps us improve our, our stores. And we also are able to reinvest the money we get from the courses into doing things like, you know, the SEO um, ventures we put in with the dropshipping stores and all those things. It just gives us, it just leverages our knowledge and gives us more freedom. Yeah. Um, so. so <laughs> what else? I don't know, I'm, I'm kind what of really else? reading this comment thread. Uh, don't let them bully you into their insane reasoning. Those that can't do, teach. It's easier to sell a course than it is to actually practice what they teach. I beg to differ. Selling a course is hard. Those that can't do, teach. Yeah, that's like, um, you never heard that? Dude. Well, you know, I've heard it, but uh, have they gone to college? Like, do, I don't know. do you have a degree? That it, if that if that statement is totally true and you should live your life by that statement, then why would you get a, a degree? Why would you get a, a high school diploma? Why would you go? Yeah, why would you go to elementary school? Yeah, they they don't even know how to spell. <laughs> they don't know the alphabet. They're just teaching it. Yeah, uh, but he says there's always an explanation. But believe me, it's all about money. <laughs> it is about money, but it doesn't. People should read the, what is it? The seven habits of highly effective people. These people, they're really stuck in like some bad, bad mental states because they're automatically believing that what's happening is some sort of lose win. They're going to lose and we're going to win. Why can't things be win-win? Not every, not everything in the world can be win-win, but I mean, that I we try to certainly approach things so that if we're if if, if we want to do well, the other what's whatever is on the other end should be happy and they should do well as well. That's a lot of wells. So, I mean, there's no reason why we can't put out a course. We can't put out a membership. People buy it, which is a win for us, and then they can also learn and implement, and then they can win as well. I mean, in reality. How did we even learn to do anything without courses? I don't know. Someone's... We've paid so many people for various knowledge on different things, and it's all led to us having our own unique skill set and our own knowledge so that we can go and become one of those people that can teach people and make money doing so. Yeah, I don't want to say makes that. selling a course like isn't that easy. Like, it isn't, I mean, it's not. yeah, like this is like, <sighs> they think, yeah, they think, oh, I'm just going to, I could, I could just make a course and I'm going to say, Hey, I made $600,000 sign up. It doesn't work like that at all. It's actually, 
if we didn't have the skills from doing what we did and talking with people who have been successful in selling courses and all this stuff, then we wouldn't really know what to do at all. Yeah, it's what we do. Like the, the money that we get from our other stuff, like is so much easier, I, I think, than the money that comes from our courses because – like that stuff is already out. Like we, like we just got a, during this, during this stream, during the stream, we got like a drop shipping sale that, that was like six or $7,000. We got a land sale, True. which whatever you said, $15,000. Um, I'll tell you how much we're going to make on that. And so that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I'm over here working. Yeah. We're going to get, we're going to get five cents from YouTube for this video. Maybe, maybe one person will sign up and buy a course. We we'll get fifteen hundred bucks. Meanwhile, we made more than that with our other stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then I got. Then what happens? The person buys the course, and then we got to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are we doing this? Guy has me rethinking things. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's just. I'm gonna delete the whole thing. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got a good one. Digital marketing humans. Okay. Thank. I, I actually That's the don't, guy's name. I actually don't know where this comment is going. Um, okay. So, a lot of things since I followed Coffeezilla is what justifies the price point of one thousand to five thousand dollars. Go on Udemy. Go on YouTube. Google it. <laughs> well, the idiotic thing about this. Is that when you go on YouTube and you go – first of all, I'll leave the Udemy thing out for a sec. We'll come back to that. But when you go on YouTube, when you Google something, when you Google how to do drop shipping, like the people – the stuff that comes up isn't going to give you the entire picture of what you need to do A to Z. They're not going to give you a yep. complete roadmap. They're going to want you to buy a course or one of their tools. They might give you a few hints here and there. But following, you know, it's like the difference between, yeah, you go over there and you, you bang a left and then you get down to Dupree Street and uh, you, you bang the second left versus like, all right, <laughs> all right, here's the map. I've highlighted the path. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, here's, a, here's a Garmin GPS here. Just put in the destination and yeah. it's, that's, the de that's the difference. Okay. So the people, course buyers, who these course, courses attract are doomed. They are going to be the outliers, and the makers of these courses will certainly highlight them. Spelled, spelled highlight wrong. But they are the exception, not the rule. Again, not the rule. They, course buyers, are looking for answers in the wrong places. They don't understand. Their core motivations are bound to spend their life chasing excellence and having to settle for mediocrity. But they will pat themselves on the back for, some th for trying or sometimes sink into a depression. But nevertheless, always failing to address their core, their core failures, whether it's sports or drop shipping, the only way to get better is to keep consistently doing it and proving, of course, and being interested in it. You yourself have to fill the gap. No guru can hold your hand and do that for you. So Tiger Woods. This guy's projecting. Hard. All right. What were you going to say? I said, I, I don't know anything about golf, but, uh, I just know that there was a time period when Tiger Woods like had to like change his whole game and like do his golf swing a different way because he like wasn't you know he could have got like an extra couple like points or whatever if he did it properly, but like imagine if he would have done the golf swing right from the beginning, like that's that's the difference between getting a high level coaching and like just not getting high level coaching. You can you can waste a lot of time going down the wrong path. Is this guy making the claim that you can't go from mediocrity to success or that following some sort of um, guidelines can't take you from mediocrity to success? It has to all be self done. I think he's, this saying... is one of the ones where I want to like quit my desk <laughs> because it doesn't even make sense. What do you, what's the difference between going on YouTube and searching for whatever you want to search versus, I mean, because that, that too is put out by people. Like, are you that cheap that you feel like everything in the world should be given to you for free? Yeah. All that the is, that is like a vampire mentality that in for you to get somewhere, you're not going to enlist help from anybody else. You're not going to give anyone else your money. You're going to go on YouTube 
just suck all their free content. I'm sure you have ad blocker on. And you know what? You're going to do it all yourself for, for $0 versus having the, the mindset that, okay, I feel that this person is legit. I feel like they know what they're talking about. And so if you're, he talks about, you know, gaps of knowledge. If you don't know anything, the, the gap of your knowledge is a, a crater. <laughs> like, how do you expect to fill that? It's like, it's like doing a, a crater sized puzzle. Uh, I don't need to, I don't need to look at the, the sheets. I'm just going to take all these pieces and I'm going to put them together and screw everyone else. It doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't why wouldn't you want to just invest a little bit so that you're providing a win-win situation where you can learn everything step by step by step, and it saves you time, it saves you money, it saves you frustration, and it probably saves the chances of you quitting because it's just too much to put together. Yeah, and I think the emphasis that I want to put on what you said is that, like, he well, what he said is that nothing justifies the price point of 1000 to $5,000. So if it's 999, then we're good. <laughs> then we're good. You just know it. No piece of information can be value, like valuable for, can be valued over a thousand dollars. But here's, here's the other thing that's interesting. Like when I, I went had, to the community college course, well, I'll leave. <laughs> finish, finish up. I think we beat, the, what I think we beat the college uh, horse to death, but um, here's something that, I remember when I had a real job, I had a corporate job. And um, so they would bring people in, consultants in, and people like to train people to get their skill set to the next level. Like specialists, mm -hmm. you know, like to introduce, like for example, you know, they would introduce us to like a new technology or I'm sure you had a similar thing or maybe not really. Like they would put this. Oh, um yeah, I guess I wasn't in sales, but I know for like, and I was, I had to more of the stuff that I said, like people introducing us to new technology and stuff, but they would put the sales team on like retreats, like with, to learn how to level up their skills, their sales skills. And I bet those retreats were not free. I'm sure those retreats cost the company way more than we're charging for a course per person, per person. And so it's not like, individuals on YouTube on the internet in on the internet are the only ones paying for knowledge. It's obviously a proven concept because a corporation whose main goal is making money is doing that for its staff on a very regular basis. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, successful corporations believe in paying consultants to come in and do these things. And while I, don't agree these corporations don't want to spend their money very precisely, they clearly see that there's some benefit to it. So what do these big companies get? These publicly traded Fortune 500 companies understand? Or maybe what are they missing that this guy understands? I don't know, but they're not going on YouTube. They're not being like, all right, guys, we're going to go on YouTube and we're going to watch some... We need some... to lean into YouTube learning this quarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We actually got wind that if, if something costs a thousand dollars, uh, we can't buy it. Not because we don't have the money, but because it's just not worth it. So yeah, we're going to just free content on YouTube sales team, uh, gather around. That's all yeah. I got. I don't know. Just a bad mindset. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If you can spend a thousand dollars to make $2,000 and it was a guaranteed thing would you spend a thousand dollars or you, that's just your boundary that something that's a thousand dollars is not i will not buy anything of that price yeah these guys are decent i'm on their list however they recently dropped a course on publishing books and their webinar was a little too sus for my liking don't get me wrong it wasn't fake guru territory but it was in the same postcode and then he says it wasn't a webinar it was a live stream my bad well <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, I think. Yeah, I don't even know why we go into like the bottom of the barrel to to do this. I mean, maybe we should because we have we have students. We have many students that have actually come from this interview. So this was a great like interview. someone said in the comments. It was a good interview. 
what was it going to be? There's always going to be a spread of people that, you know, what's the, there's always a bell curve, Joe. Some people are going to think one extreme. Some people are going to be on the other extreme. And then there's people in the middle. I think the majority of the people, the people here, you know, had decent things to say. But you're always going to get, you know, those those outliers. Well, it had, outliers. A, it had an amazing like to dislike ratio. I mean, we're just reading the worst of the worst comments. It got Was like, it amazing? It only got like 13 dislikes and 508 likes. Oh, nice. So, I mean, most people are saying positive things. Um, All right. All right, we're That's approaching the hour. I mean, guys, put some of your questions in the chat. We'll get to them. Um, let's maybe we'll see. Let's find one more. Ron Koch says, "Ask your mom for a shirt." <laughs> it's too late, Ma. Bring me a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um. You looking for comments still? Yeah, I'm just scrolling through here. Got to find one more negative one. Okay. Well, I'll read um, I'll read a comment or a chat rather. Smoky Gull says, "Do you still recommend the lawn and garden niche?" And the answer is sure. There's definitely people making sales in those categories that are our students that are not our students. We've done videos talking about products in this category, but if you're new to our content, it's going to come down to your suppliers. It's going to come down to your execution, whether you wind up making six figures a month in revenue for it, or if it doesn't work for you. So yeah, there's plenty of money to be made in that niche. Um, just comes down to your execution. And so if you want to really dive deep and, Get the execution part out of the way. We do have the course, buildassetsonline.com slash asset. And that is our dropshipping course. Uh, you can check that out. All right. So uh, this isn't really a hate comment, but from another YouTuber called, I think he has a much bigger channel than ours called The Ecom King. I really love the interview. What I will say, though, is I don't agree with the whole dropshipping using Facebook ads doesn't work. I've been in this game for five years, generated multiple seven figures using Facebook ads. We all have our own way of doing things. SEO and Google ads are great, but don't say Facebook Facebook is bad as they are two totally different marketing platforms. Um, yeah. We've said multiple times that we don't think that using Facebook ads straight up don't work. But you know, in our experience, it's just never consistent. It's never consistent. It goes up. It goes down. You have nothing to sell at the end of the day. Um, it's just not a good use of most people's time. Yeah. And again, we've never said that Facebook ads don't work because we use them ourselves for particular things. So, yeah, we got to take it back to the, the online business criteria don't, chart or don't, whatever checklist that we have. Don't make me pull and, up another um, window, Mike. Don't don't pull it up. <laughs> don't pull it up. But uh, most of the time, business models involving Facebook don't fit that criteria. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not to say that it doesn't work. We would not teach something that is built on such a a bad foundation, like most like most drop shipping Facebook things are. Yeah. And there's going, to, there's going to be exceptions to every rule, but we know we know what works. We know what we do. If applied consistently over time, we'll yield better and better results. And we can't say the same about you know what other people are doing on Facebook. Yeah, we're we're uh, we we look for the most straightforward path to consistent compounding income with big exits. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all we look for. Yeah. And that's our way of doing it. That's our school of thought. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like martial arts, right? Everyone has their, uh, their way. And, oh, if you, this way is the best. Right. And it's like, you'll never actually know unless you really get in and 
and do something consistently for many years to actually, you know, develop an understanding of what it is that someone is teaching. Uh, we've done the Facebook stuff. We've really tried to make it work with e-com and it just, it just wasn't worth it. And we've really refined, you know, different things that we've learned and different things that we've tested and all this stuff. And, uh, this is, this is how we feel it is. Yeah. All right. Well, William Grimble says a good video. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. Uh, so what's, what's, what's coming up, Mike? What do we got to talk about next, next time? Am I supposed to know the answer to this? No, I don't know. This was kind of an out of the blue episode. I didn't really know what to. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get another interview going, Joe. I want to get, um, that secret, uh, secret website buyer that we know. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I mean, he said he'd be willing to come on. I think that would be interesting. And all, all the, all the people who say that we're scammers, you know, we can have, we can have someone on the show who's given us six figures of, of their money. <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be, that would be the ultimate testimonial. Yeah. I mean, I don't really take these comments seriously. I almost like in my head, like I almost think they're fake. <laughs> I mean, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. I get worked up in in the moment, but like it doesn't. I, I almost feel like a Russian bot could have like spun this up or something. Like it's just running, <laughs> it's just running on autopilot, you know? It's just yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just scraping. Not the, very good. Just scraping the web and leaving comments. Oh, dropship video. We leave. We leave that. <laughs> we leave bad comment. Dropship. <laughs> what's the point? Like, uh, like, what's the what's the end goal? They're just trying to they're just, just trying to stir up uh, angst in the in the Western Goose world. Star. Yeah, really, I have some angst after this video, but it'll, <laughs> it'll go away after we, uh... Oh, I gotta put some clothes on. Michael Lacko likes your chest hair. Oh, thanks. It's, uh... It's not that well, if you like If you like, um, videos with Joe in the robe, then please let us know, because I'm sure he'd be willing to make more. I don't know, I feel like I'm kind of getting, like, I'm, like, drawn, like, I've never been in a robe for so long. I feel like I'm getting, like, like a skin irritation or something. <laughs> Maybe you gotta oil yourself up beforehand then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I do need to get earled up before the videos. You know, you have a lot of weird complaints, I think, on the show. That your head it needs to breathe, but it needs it needs to be warmed up. <laughs> you need <laughs> the robe is making your skin dry. I don't know what to tell you. This is what's happening. <laughs> you try sitting well, in a. What was? How long have you ever sat in a towel for? I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. Have you ever sat in I'll a do, towel? I'll do the next video in a robe. If we can get some the elite, the elite robe. Should we? Yeah, yeah I think we can. Yeah. We can print. Yeah, Michael Lacko wants us to do a, a new video: drop shipping and skin conditions. <laughs> we should make a um, drop shipping with psoriasis mm -hmm. video. <laughs> yeah. I don't have psoriasis. <laughs> you might. I have a patch. Um, of, I have a patch of eczema. The dermatologist <laughs> said it's it's harmless. Oh, okay. Uh, Aoki Laura says, "What do you guys think about dropshipping commercial cigarette machines? Each goes for roughly 10k to 20k." Before we get to this question, actually, I did look up, as per someone's comment, in uh, this little thing we were looking at here. That you don't see dollar stores uh, teaching everyone how to be a dollar store person. Well, uh, if you go to dollarstoreservices.com, you can indeed find a course on how to start a dollar store. And there's actually <laughs> several, several resources on how to start a dollar store. And so why are these people not just starting up all the dollar stores in the world, Joe? Why? That's this actually, game. That's actually really interesting. I, I I I did not expect that. Yeah, it's actually pretty saturated. If you the keyword, if you search like uh, Dollar Tree, well, I search Dollar Tree franchise. Actually, it's a decent amount of search volume. But this Whoa. is it's a whole thing. So let me get back to uh, 
Alki, Alki's question. Sorry if I'm not saying your name right. Commercial cigarette machines. My one concern there is do you need some sort of license to do that? Or 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 is it just like um, an empty vending machine type thing? Um, I don't know if you're in the U.S. or not because we don't really have those anymore. Remember, you know, when Joe and I were young, we used to go to yeah. this restaurant with our parents and – I'd always be looking at the cigarette vending machine. Yeah. And, you, know, you, you don't see those anymore in America, at least. I know in Europe and stuff, people still, uh, in, still smoke. In Europe and stuff, people love smoking. Like, they'll have the, the cigarette packet and it has, like, the – all of them have, like, the infected lung on it. Like, yeah. <laughs> someone dying and they're just, like, oh, out on the table, like, the lung is just, like, facing – facing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. No one cares at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it could be good if you can get into it, if there's no sort of, um, thing preventing you from getting in, to, but just in America, they're not here. Let me search it. Uh, commercial cigarette. Vending machine. Yeah, those are more popular when you could like smoke in the restaurant. Maybe you could still do that places. I, I think cause they're gone from this area cause you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, it could be something like, you know, selling vending machines, which I don't think you can necessarily do because it's like the whole idea of the vending machine is I think it's some sort of contract you have with the vending machine company and they're going to supply you all the stuff. It's not like um, just a machine that you buy and now you have the machine and you're on your own. Right, I think there's some sort of um, <laughs> he meant he meant sort of he meant cigarette machines that produce cigarettes. Like I guess you roll them. Oh, did he say that? Yeah. Oh, a cigarette machine that produces cigarettes commercially. I don't know who's starting up a cigarette. Hold on a second. Cigarette machine rolling machine um maybe you know what there may be something to this <laughs> See, that would have been a better question for the elite fleet. Like, you don't want to, you know, public publicize that. Not that anyone's going to do it, of course. No, like, nobody's going to. It's like that Seinfeld episode. Not that, not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, I would say I would say go for it, Aki. I, I'm sorry. I, don't, I, I have no idea how to say the name. But are you – I don't know. I would say – if you're in the course, then you should be able to execute on this in some sort of way. Um, but if you're not, then I mean you can try it out as well. But it, it'll be it'll be a long road to getting in with these suppliers. Um, Grimble says you guys are great and wonderful. Thank you, Grimble. <laughs> Showering us in compliments, Abe said did you ever download a course from torrent sites or other sources i think we all download movies and other stuff it's less ethical but more accessible for people just watching uh i'm scared of torrents i haven't torrented anything in like eight years yeah don't do that you won't be able to find our stuff that way by the way yeah we, we actually pay a very hefty fee for um mm -hmm company that that does not that searches the web for that type of stuff so if you download our stuff with torrents or you're seeding it or i don't even know how it works um you, you may you may have someone coming after you i'll say that <laughs> enter ecom says uh just checking in guys he can't got here late well, well he's about he's about to leave because we're not going to get into anything 
Yeah, we're anything not... good in these last uh, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's... Get to the point, guys. <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have no points left, but good to see you enter econ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's been a fun stream. I mean, if you guys, if you want to stay on for a couple more minutes, you can leave us some topics for next week or something. Uh, maybe we could do another drop shipping list, but I really don't want to. I don't know what I want to do, man. Yeah, I um, I don't know. Hopefully, we can get some interviews. Drop shipping lists. We've been there, done that. Are we ranking for them yet? Not yet. So I was, I was actually looking. I was looking at our uh, our YouTube analytics, and actually, it's kind of funny. The stuff that gets us the most subscribers is like. Um, so actually, let me let me pull this up because this is kind of funny. Uh, hold on, this is kind of funny. Dropshipping CBD. We can read some negative comments here. This is great. Hold on. Dropshipping CBD. Yeah, I was gonna say read that. Read that comment. This is our like most watched video besides for like one other. Um, dropshipping CBD. Dropshipping CBD products is dumb. Do high ticket dropshipping instead. Oh my god, yeah. an ad. Get away. Okay. I begged. I whoa, Nr Mamadov. See, it's a Russian bot. I begged. <laughs> Read it in Russian. I beg to differ with you. I recently purchased Turnkey CBD dropshipping store from site called <laughs> CBDWebsites.net. It gets quite good traffic from Facebook, just with an automated blog. I agree. It is not possible to promote your products directly on Google or Facebook, but you can still promote your content. I also agree with you that dropshipping high-ticket items is best, but it is very competitive and you need crazy amount of content on your site. Plus, I realized something weird. Some companies do dropship do promote their dropshipping sites on Google, but typing CB space D or TH space C instead of CBD and THC on their headline, I don't know if this is trick or what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's pretty funny. That That is literally a, a Russian spam comment. Yeah, I don't I know. I use great site, CBD website. Under, underground. Underground. CBD's websites. <laughs> Yeah, but what else did that other person say, Joe? What? What other person? Scott Taylor? Oh, you, you sent it um, to me on Skype or something the other day. It was like, sounds like someone deterring away from a, a great business model. Oh, yeah, I don't know where that comment is. Yeah, someone said, sounds like someone, you know, trying, like I'm trying to quarter well, the CBD market to myself. Yeah. Yeah, imagine imagine thinking that. Like, why would you even why would you even make the video? I don't know. Instead of just going after the CBD market, website? like, hey, you're not yeah, you're just gonna make a video. Don't don't sell here, guys. Trust me, you don't want to see. You don't want to sell yeah. this. Yeah. Hold on, wait, wait. I think I found it. Yeah, sounds like you're trying to divert attention from a hot market with that shaky voice, homie. <laughs> my shaky voice. What, uh, what is don't that? Do this niche, please. <laughs> stop, stop. That'd be a good video. Oh yeah. Like... Don't do this video, guys. Don't do this niche. <laughs> yeah, that's the no. Like, yeah, let, let's do one more dropshipping list video. We'll we'll frame it like that. <laughs> yeah. The niche gets revealed. Oh no! All right. Well, we've really gone for well this one. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, it's been fun. Um, see you guys next Monday. That's it. Uh, yeah, two days. Two days from now. Mark the calendar. Wear your robe, and take it easy.